So some of you may be thinking about using the process of solarization. This video, we're gonna go through what the university say about solarization, why I'm using solarization in a very specific manner, and what it can do to macro and both microfauna in your soil and whether or not this method's best for you. So the University of California defines solarization as a non-chemical way to control pests in a garden using the radiant heat of the sun. Now, when we reference pests in both agronomy and agriculture, we're referring to fungi, bacteria, microfauna, so little microbes, as well as macrofauna that affect plants. This can actually also include weeds. So the term pest is all encompassing and isn't necessarily just referencing bugs. So just keep that in mind. If someone with a science background is referring to pests, all encompassing biological things that may affect a plant's growth. And that's why we call pesticides, pesticides as an umbrella term for herbicides, fungicides, insecticides, etc. So you may be wondering exactly how this works. It works similar to that of a greenhouse or a low tunnel, but because it's so close to the soil surface, it actually traps the sun's radiant heat in the first 12 to 18 inches of our soil surface. This is where a lot of biological activity takes place. This biological activity can again be in the form of bacterial, fungal, or actual pests themselves or weeds. The top 18, 12 to 18 inches can get up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a very very warm. That's as warm as an oven can get. And that's ultimately what kills off those harmful pests. The other reason why you may use solarization is if, if you have a new bed that has a leaf litter layer compost and then maybe some mineral soil the solarization process actually expedites the decomposition of organic material into mobilized bioavailable nutrients. It's also been anecdotally noted that it speeds up the harvestability of the plant, the plant's longevity, how fast it grows, etc., and so forth. And most of that is attributed to less pest pressure being the solution. Now, of course, nothing is perfect and it does kill off both micro and macro fauna. Now, the micro fauna in particular has been noted to recolonize really quickly. This is true even with synthetic fertilizers or chlorinated water, etc., and so forth. While there may be a very mild, if any, die off, the die off that does happen tends to recolonize quickly in, a, in an expedited fashion. So with that being said, I wouldn't worry too much about micro uh, die off, especially the beneficials. Now, if you are worried about this, I would just treat a soil once or only when needed. So for example, if you have a powdery mildew problem, they, some people are of the thought process that powdery mildew spores can be killed by heat. Now I'm on the other side of it where I don't think they can be killed by heat because it doesn't even really get killed in my hot compost. And because of that, I don't subscribe to that. But if you, you thought, in your head that powdery mildew was a major issue, you're at your wit's end, you know it's in your soil, you may want to solarize. Solarization may be the solution here. The negative effects of killing off beneficial microbes are offset by the reduction or completely um, dissipation of pest species. This also goes if you're setting up a new soil, which is actually the reason why I'm using solarization here. Now, macrofauna earthworms, for example, are able to move away from the heat, meaning they will go lower into the soil surface or just move from that area until it comes back and cools back down again. Now, a reason why you could use this in a cold climate setting actually has to do if you have a warm crop that likes warmer soil. So for example, tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, they like a warmer soil. So you may want to just solarize for a day or two to get that heat up that will then allow you to transplant those plants and reduce that transplant shock and get them off to a glowing start. Now there is a right way and a wrong way to do this. Behind me here you can see I have some clear plastic on my soil surface. The key here is that it's not black garbage bag. It's no other color than clear. Clear is what allows the sun to penetrate and then be captured in that soil surface giving us that effect. Black will actually reflect the heat off along with any other material. So I'm just using clear plastic garbage bags and you can reuse these year after year. The next thing is you want this to be really nice and tight to your soil surface. Neighbors everywhere. This is my front yard garden by the way so everyone's like what is she doing? If it's not close to the soil surface, we don't get the same results. So the tighter, the better. And that's why I use these little Dollarama clips. They have two little pokey ends that are shaped like a U. I just shove it in the plastic and it holds it really nice and tight to the soil surface. You want to make sure the entire area is fully covered and fully glued down and not allowing air through. But before you even put the plastic in place, before you even add those C-clips, you actually need to water. 
water is the vector that allows for that soil to really get to that 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So when we add water, we want to saturate it the entire 12 inches because we want the heat to move down that 12 to 18 inches into our soil system. So give it a nice water, like a 30 minute sprinkler on, let it soak. You also want to make sure that any mulch that may be on that soil surface is entirely removed because mulch will actually prevent that heat from getting to the depth it needs to go to. So temporarily remove it and then put it back after. So once you've watered, removed your mulch, you then can let this sit for four to six weeks or until your soil gets to the temperature you need to transplant outdoors if that's the reason you're using this. Now my setup, I'm using it in new beds because I don't know if the garden soil has pests in it, such as weeds. I've been burnt so many times with weeds in new garden soil. So that's the reasoning for, I'm using, for why I'm using it. They have used it in the past for a week or two to actually warm that soil surface so I can transplant outdoors just a little bit early. But I hope this helped you guys out in understanding whether or not you should solarize your soil. If it did, be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you next time. Bye.